This is Renee Romeo. You're joining me today in my bathroom where I'm going to bring you this balance project and show you how simple and easy it is to put together and assemble and hang. So, uh, what we're going to do here, I've started off with a roll of masking tape and some craft paper, and I've cut out a pattern that I've made on my own, just kind of drawing it uh, lightly on the paper, cutting it out, and then fixing it to the wall. Now, I have this affixed to the wall just below the crown molding, and what that winds up doing for the room, instead of mounting valances to the top of your casing or your window, if you mount it way up high, it really brings the room up with you. So it makes the room appear bigger, and I always, always, always try to mount window treatments higher in the room than the actual window casing. Um, it really gives the appearance of a lot more space. So what I've done, I've lived with this in the space for a few days just to see if I like it, to see if I like the way that I've cut the curves at the bottom and to make any adjustments in my pattern uh, to go forward. So this is what the fabric looks like when it's cut out. But what we have here is 40, 54 inches worth of fabric that needs to be shrunken down to 33 inches. Now my window casings are 32 and a half and that's edge to edge and I need to do a little extra quarter inch on each side just so that I know that when the window treatment terminates to the wall that I'll cover up that casing completely at the top and you should do the same thing. So what I've done then is I'll take this pattern piece and it needs to be pleated. So we're just going to find the center and we're just going to pleat it in to the middle and just give us a little bit of a pleat in the center and then take it again and measure over to your sides. Now what you're going to do here is you're going to take the width of your board and you're going to transfer that onto your pattern piece and then you're going to pleat it to the corner so that you get three pleats two in either corner and one along the middle and then my entire face fabric is going to be 33 inches wide so that's a half inch wider than the actual casing you're going to do the exact same thing in your case now let's talk fabric lining that room is a very bright sunny room and i really don't want to block any sunlight from coming in the windows at all so uh, i am not going to use a blackout fabric a lot of times i'll use blackout fabric because i like to maintain the crispness of the fabric itself and the pattern looking at it won't be distorted by any sun coming through the window. But this is a model looking fabric and it's really an open weave and that's exactly what I'm looking for. So my considerations for lining are either I could use just a very lightweight econo lining, what they call it, uh, or what I'm going to do in my case, I'm going to use an interlining. Now interlining is basically a, a, just a plain flannel and it, there, it allows light to come through and what it's going to do for this fabric, this fabric is very drapey and I'd like to give it just a little bit more body um, when it's up on the window treatment. It's going to be uh, nice and full looking versus a very flat looking piece of fabric. So this gives it nice body. When you put it on it, you can kind of see the difference here about how um, it kind of molds to, to your touch. And that's exactly what I'd like to do with this treatment. It's going to be light and airy, but it's going to be uh, have enough body to it as well to look substantial. So this is what I'm using. I'm cutting it out exactly from the same pattern that I cut out the fabric. And then I'm going to sandwich the two together. Now once your interlining or lining is cut, what you're going to do, if you can imagine this window treatment hanging up high, wherever you're going to have these little pleats, you're really going to be able to see up into the back side of the treatment. So you really could put another piece of fabric back there and have something decorative showing through. But in my case, I don't want to introduce another piece of fabric into the room, uh, like a contrast fabric. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit more of the face fabric and I'm going to simply applique it to the bottom edge of that interlining. So you'll see I have a piece already cut out here and pinned onto the, the uh, interlining here. And the way that I've done this, I've taken just the regular fabric and then I've taken the bottom edge of this pattern piece and I've lined it up along the bottom edge enough to give me about a three to four inch 
swath of fabric all along the bottom of that interlining. With the pattern piece in place, you can see you just go along the edge, cut it out, and this is just positioned about four inches below the top edge of the fabric so that I get a nice piece that I'm going to applique. You can see exactly what that winds up looking like. So you've got just this nice strip that's going to go along the bottom edge along the back. Now it's very important that the applique pieces are the exact same size because you will get a little bit of light coming through and you'll see the outline of the applique. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your previous applique and just put it over the top of your next piece and get that perfectly lined up so that they all look exactly the same across all three window treatments. Now you'll see that this is the interlining or lining and here is the piece that I'm appliquing on top of it. So I have this pinned directly to the edges, everything's lined up and then what I have mine set at, I have an applique stitch, but if you don't have an applique stitch on your machine, just go ahead and set it to a zigzag stitch where the length of the stitches are really close together. So once that's done, um, you can go ahead and line up the edge of your fabric, your, your finished fabric, to the needle. And then go ahead and start your machine. And I have this on a very slow setting so that I can make sure that this isn't going to shift as I go along. But as long as you have this, this edge of the fabric lined up with your needle, you'll be just fine. And then <clears throat> when you get to this little corner, you're going to stop it right there and turn it so that you can make this corner and keep everything nice and flat. So go ahead and put your presser foot back down and continue on in this direction. You're just gonna do this as you go over the whole interlining piece and get the entire thing appliqued on. And then when it's done, it's going to look like this. So my stitch, my applique stitch, uh, is like a little railroad kind of baseball-ish stitch here. And so you'll see it lays nice and flat and that's exactly what you're going to wind up with when you're done nice and flat and finished on the back side of the treatment. Now there's one last little detail that I have to take care of before I put these together um, and sandwich them. I have this little detail here. Hopefully you can see the cutout that I've made along the side. I've got a trim piece of wood that sticks out from the wall just a little bit, enough to, if I just went ahead and put this up on the wall, it would keep this away from laying nice and flat against the wall along the side. So I'm going to do a little cutout here on both sides on all the window treatments so that way they lay nice and flat to the window and they kind of follow the contour of that trim piece that I I have. So if you have issues like that too, it's a great way to take care of it. It's just to make a little sketch of what that trim piece looks like, a little profile of it, and go ahead and cut it out. So I've got my little piece cut out. I'm going to line it up and I'm going to cut it out along the side right at the right point. And I've already done one on one side and so you can kind of see what this is going to look like. So I have, it's just a straight piece along the edge with the tiny little cutout and then going straight again. So this is going to lay nice and flat up against the wall when it's finished. And I'm just going to trace this out with the sewing machine and it'll just be a little nice little piece that's going to be taken out of it so it lays nice and flat. Okay, so right sides together. So I have my bottom edges toward me and I'm just going to line up the bottom edge of the finished front piece and start pinning all of this together. Now this is going to lay nice and flat and really with the interlining it, it kind of acts like uh, a little bit of velcro so it keeps things nice and flat and even and you can just go ahead and smooth it out and I'm sorry about the cat but she's knocking stuff over. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pin this and then um, I'll go ahead and show you how to sew it together. I have this over at my machine and I'm just going to go ahead and sew along this line. Uh, I'm on the back side of my face fabric and I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I take care of this little open area here. So it's just a straight stitch. Now that's a half inch seam basically that I'm doing but when I get to this little part I'm just going to do um, 
more like a quarter of an inch because it's not going to get any wear and tear and I just want to get just a slight outline and I do this very very slowly so that I can kind of get the profile if you need to you can pick up your presser foot so that you are able to get around this a little bit better and then back to the line and now you're back to straight stitching now I'm at the end of my side piece and I just wanted to show you how you how you pivot along these relief areas here um, when you're trying to get in and out of corners so you're just going to pivot and I just keep my fabric lined up against my presser foot so that I get a half inch seam and you'll see when I get to the edge I'm going to stop just above the tip and then I'll pivot it and you'll see it lines up perfectly with this edge so you're just going to lower your presser foot again and that's how you're going to go along the entire way getting around all of these little pivots now see I'm I'm a little bit over on my side so I have to do one more stitch before I can turn it and now it lines up perfectly so that's what you're going to do and now that it's all sewn together so here's the applique mark right here and this is the front side so just to give you a clear indication of what needs to be done before you can turn this right side out all of the corners need to be clipped otherwise they're going to wind up with a little bit too much fabric in the corners and they'll get a little bunchy looking and then when you're going into an area like this a V you're going to want to clip these as well up into the corner without hitting the actual stitching so anytime you get a point go ahead and clip that off very close to the stitching like you see and then anytime you have a curve you're going to want to come in just like you did with that V and just give it a few clips so that the fabric will lay nice and flat when you flip this up the right side out and now that everything is clipped we're going to go ahead and flip this right side out and I have this little corner tool it's a little bamboo piece it's got a very uh, nice point on it and basically what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to get these beautiful points on all of these pieces uh, and corners that we have and you just press it in the corner like so pull out your fabric and then ever so gently you're going to just keep pressing this into the corner until you have something that looks you know nice and pointy and even and you have to be careful because it is a bit, little bit sharp it can go through your fabric but you'll see now that's the point that you want when you're flipping this over especially in the corners uh, you want this to be nice and crisp so you're just going to take this and you're going to do this on every single point that you have just running it along your your stitch line underneath and trying to get these points to come out because it, after you're done with this you're going to go ahead and press it now you'll also see that uh, if you had done lining all the way to the bottom edge here and it were just two pieces of fabric with just white lining and the fabric in front um, you would definitely see the white showing out from the front because um, you could you could see this seam in here and you'd see quite a bit of white so you never want to do that I've seen a lot of professional drapery makers make this mistake once everything is turned right side out, go ahead and get your iron on a medium high setting, no steam. Do not steam drapery fabric uh, when you're doing this process because it may interfere with the sizing on the fabric and it might make this fabric limp. So always, always, always start with a dry iron. Now that everything is pressed, everything is laid nice and flat, I've also gone ahead and I basted the very top edge of the valance. So that's nice and secure. Uh, the two layers of fabric aren't going to be moving around while I start pleating. So the way to start pleating is I take my uh, pattern again and I'm just going to lay it over the top of this and everywhere that I have a, a crease, I'm going to mark it with a marker. Um, I'm going to just lay this on the edge, edge to edge, 
making sure it's nice and flat. And I'll start marking. So I have a pleat here, 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 here. I'll find the middle and everything on my pattern comes to the middle. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab some pins. So everything is pinned at the top and we're just going to go ahead and start folding this so that way we know where all we're going to need to press. This was very helpful because you have all of your tips here and when you're doing this you're just going to drag this nice and tight and get your iron in there and again this iron is not steam it's just dry heat and the next one is going to come in here go to the tip and push it in and pull it and just make sure that this opening is even all the way from the top to the bottom and press it. And each one of these is going to go along the exact same way. Now this is the corner, so this is going to have to go around the corner, so you're going to go ahead and pull it nice and tight and flip it over onto itself and press it again. You don't want it to be too structured. So let's do this in the middle. The middle is actually the easiest one because you've got all your points in here and a great guide. So point to point, you're just going to fold it and pull it nice and taut and then get your iron and press it in place. Pull it nice and tight. And you see you get a nice even space all the way down the center. Now I'm about to start cutting out the boards that I need for the top of the window treatment. This is the piece of wood that the treatment will be stapled to as a nice finished top edge. So I have a T and the T is really useful. You can line it up along the machined edge of the plywood and get a true square out of this. And so my depth is actually three and a quarter inches. So I have a mark here and it's marked all the way along the length. And then the width of the treatment is 33 and a third. So 33 and a third, also on the machine edged, um, is lined up here, and I'm just going to go ahead and make my mark. Now, you can use a circular saw for this, or you can use a miter saw to finish off the end piece. Um, I think I'll use both uh, just to show you what that looks like. So safety first, safety glasses. I also have ear protection, which is a must, especially in a very small room uh, where you're going to get a loud bounce back uh, with the sound of the saw. So this saw actually has a laser light on it and it allows you to line it up with your drawn line and follow that as you cut. So I will go ahead, it's going to be a little loud, but I'll go ahead and you'll see everything is clamped down. This is not moving. And then here's the miter saw. Now this also has a, a guard on it that I'm just going to pull up and make sure I have this all lined up so I'm not going to cut off too much of the wood. I'll let it go and then I'll just cut this. Super easy. Don't be intimidated. This, these are two of the best tools that you could use around your home for any project. I have some lining fabric and it's just a scrap piece. I always keep this around in case I need to wrap a board. And you do want to wrap this because in case you see up underneath your window treatment, you want this to appear nice and finished all the way around. So all I'm going to do basically is just wrap this like a present. Um, I'm going to take my stapler. This is a, an electric stapler, I, which I absolutely love. And I'm just going to go ahead and start right in the middle and start wrapping this piece of wood. And then once everything is wrapped, you're just going to grab a hammer, any kind of hammer, and just tap these staples in just to get them flush with the top. Now this is the underside of the treatment. So this is what you're going to look at from up underneath. We're going to cover this eventually with, with uh, fabric so that you won't see any of the staples at all. So I can go ahead and start stapling the window treatments to the board. 
So you'll see I've marked the middle of the board with a pen and that is going to give me the perfect spot to line up my middle mark on my window treatment and line up that basting edge along the edge of the board. So I have that perfectly aligned and I can go ahead and I can staple it in place. Now at this point you're not getting the staples too close together because you have a couple more layers of staples to put on top of this and you don't want them to interfere with one another. So all you're going to do at this point is take the middle of your pleat on either side and line those up along the edge. Again, lining up that basting with the edge of the board, the edge of the front of the board, and going ahead and stapling that in place. and I'm simply lining up this basted edge with the front of the board and hopefully you can see exactly what that looks like. There's the front of the board as it's folded over. There's my stitching. And just go ahead and put a staple in each one of those areas about two inches apart from one another. In order to get this corner just right, I, I like to hang this treatment off the corner of a table so that you can actually see how this is going to hang. And this one's actually hanging really well. It, you can go ahead and kind of pull on it and tug on it a little bit just to see what it's going to do. But, but here's my stitching here and it's lining up pretty well with the corner. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a staple in here just to hold it. And then go ahead and remove those pins line it up. Yeah, that's still going to be good. So we could just go right ahead and start stapling all of this in place permanently. Now in order to make the top cording along the top edge of the window treatment, all we're doing is taking some ordinary cotton covered cording in any size you like. Mine happens to fit underneath a special presser foot that I have on my machine, but you don't need that. You could just put it, go ahead and put in your zipper foot so that you can stitch right close next to this cotton cording. And the width of the fabric is enough to get uh, to get around this cording and to be able to fold it over and have a nice lip here so that you have something to staple through on your board. So I'll just go ahead and stitch this and show you what it looks like. And you'll see when it's done it looks like it has a nice edge on it. This will staple onto the top of the board just fine, just like that. It's got a nice lip, and that's exactly what you want to go across the top of your window treatment. So here is your fabric faced cording, and this is going to go ahead and get lined up along that front edge as well. So what you're going to do is um, just kind of feel your way here and again there's a piece of stitching just behind the backing of the cording and you're just going to go ahead and line that up with the existing stitching underneath it that basted piece and go ahead and just put that right in place and just pull it ever so slightly in the direction that you're going so that way this lays nice and flat and taut and it's not going to look bunchy at all So now how do I turn this corner? I'm just going to go ahead and take the cording and just make a little fold here right into the corner. So you'll see it's like a little pleat and go around the corner just like that, staple it in place. And when you come to the end, you're just going to trim this off and then you're going to open up your fabric just a little bit so that you can trim that cording right down to where the wood stops. So you don't want this going beyond the wood. So I had to cut off about an inch and a half, pull it nice and taut again, and then fold it over to the top side because you don't want that fold to show on the bottom side. I'm finishing the very top of the window treatment so you'll see I have the cording is all in place everything stapled and I just want to cover the very top of the window treatment now you could leave it the way it is but professionals don't do that so neither do we so I'm going to go ahead 
cut a strip of fabric about six inches wide, the entire width of the fabric, and then you can go ahead and line it up in according to the way that the pattern runs in the fabric. So all the fabric is right side up, so I'm just going to simply take it and sandwich it together, right sides together, and line up this back edge with the cording. Now, if you've ever been in a fabric store and you've seen this cardboard on a roll, this is what you use it for. It's to create nice sharp lines in your fabric upholstery pieces. Um, and we're going to do the same thing because we want a nice crisp line along the front edge of this. So you can kind of see here, when you flip it back, this exposed edge is nice and crisp. I'll do a close up on it, but there's your cording and then there's your face fabric. So this is what we're going to go for is to try to get a nice crisp edge on this as we staple along. So you, what you want to do with the cardboard is line it up behind the cording. You can feel it with your thumb that it's pushed right up against the back side of that cording. And that's exactly where you want to position it. Go ahead, staple, staple all this in place, get it nice and lined up, and that's how you finish off the window. And there's your close up. And the very last thing we're going to do is just tip this up. Now this is the back side that's going to be heading toward the wall. So we're just going to make a nice fold in the back, fold it over so it's nicely finished all the way around, and staple this into place, pulling ever so gently as you go. When you get to the corner, you're just going to trim off your excess fabric you're going to tuck this in flat, fold it under, make sure everything is tucked in really well, and then you can pull it nice and tight and staple it. So you'll see, I've already installed one of the angle brackets. The balance is going to sit on top of it just like that. So you kind of have a visual of where I'm going with this. Uh, the way that I've located it, I have a nice piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. I held it right underneath the crown molding and I made a mark. So that mark represents the top of the angle bracket. So the angle bracket is going to go in just like this. Now let's talk about how a window is hung. A window has a header above it, and that header is one giant piece of wood. It goes from one side of the window to the other. So I know that I have wood all the way around on the top. I don't need to use anchors. Um, it's not hollow behind it, so we're, I'm very lucky in that case. If you're not lucky like that, then you need to use anchors to hold this uh, securely to the wall. So now that I have that done, I know that this is going to be level to one another because my crumb molding is level. So let's hold the angle bracket up, eyeball it to that mark so that the mark is at the top of the angle bracket. I'm just going to go ahead and mark where I need to put my screws. So I'm using a heavy duty screw. Um, it's an inch and a half long. That's long enough to get through the drywall and securely into that header piece. So let's just go ahead, I've inserted the screw into the angle bracket, and I'm just going to line it up with the hole, get that going, get my second screw, get that going, nice and secure. So that's not going anywhere. Now, it's not a heavy window treatment anyway, so I'm not too concerned about this. And what I'm going to do, I'll take a three-quarter inch screw and I'll screw it up through the top holes and get that valance secured. So you'll grab your valance and you'll just put it right on top of your brackets. And you might need to angle it just to get it into the wall a little bit and make sure that it's centered to your window, which mine is. You'll grab your three-quarter inch screws and ever so gently Get up underneath it and secure it to the board. Okay, and you'll see how there's that little notch that I made to accommodate this piece of trim. And this is laying just perfectly. It looks great. 
You can primp it a little bit if you need to, just to make sure that everything's laying just right. And I'll install the other two and show you what it looks like. And here's a close-up of the finished product. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video on making valances and hanging them and seeing that it really isn't all that difficult to put together. It takes just a little patience, really, to get it done, and you wind up with something unbelievably unique, something that your neighbor doesn't have, uh, and really something extra special. So this is Renee Romeo. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll come again to you with another great project.